Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad and this session we're going to look at reports on internal control at service organization known as the SOX report. Now this is part of assurance services other than audit in which we looked at uh, reviews, compilations, review of interim financial statement, we look at the attestation engagement. This session we would look at the SOC report. Now we need to understand how this works, how the SOC report works. Most probably, no, there's a good chance if you're watching this and in the, you are in the United States, when you look at your paycheck, you might see the name of these two companies, Paychex or ADP. But you don't work for Paychex and you don't work for ADP. You might be working for Walmart, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, any other company, but you might see some other name on your paycheck. And the reason is simple. What companies find out is they are better off outsourcing their payroll. Why? There's a lot of work to do with payroll. There's a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, a lot of deductions. Um, laws are constantly changing and companies, they may, they may not want to worry about this. They want to let somebody else worry about this because it's more efficient and cheaper for them. So how does this process work? So let me give you an example because we need to define a few terms here that, that, that's not, that we did not cover before. Let's assume my company, which is Farhat, accounting lectures okay i happen to have um 10 employees yeah right i'm by myself okay but let's assume that's the case and now what i need to do i need to have an audit okay so obviously i'm gonna hire an audit firm this is the audit firm it's called the best cpa firm so i'm gonna be i'm gonna be hiring the best cpa firm to conduct my audit that's fine now, here we go. Now I have 10 employees. I don't have time to worry about their payroll. None of them, they have the skills to handle the payroll for the company. So what do I do? I'm gonna go to ADP, okay, ADP, and ask ADP to process my payroll, okay? So now ADP, in a sense, it's part of my company, small part of my company, but ABP, ADP is a large company, but it's technically part of my company. So when the best CPA firm comes to audit me, they're going to have to audit my payroll. But I don't have payroll. I have ADP within my company. So there we go. So here's some, some, some terms we need to be familiar with. Okay. ADP is called the service organization in this process. Farhat Accounting Lecture is the user of service organization. So that's that's one player, the service organization. I am the user of the service organization. The best CPA firm here is the auditor of the service organ of the user, not the service organization, of the user. Of service organization simply put my auditor but I just want to make sure we are familiar with all these terms now we're gonna add an, a fourth player so basically we have three players Farhat accounting lectures is one uh, let's just let's put it one Farhat accounting lectures if one is one ADP is two and my auditor is three now here we go now, ADP knows that the company that they service, they get audited. So they know that Farhat Accounting Lectures might get an audit. And they know part of the audit is to audit the internal control and all the cycles within the accounting information system. So what happened over the years, ADP has many, many clients. So what ADP did to keep their client happy, what they did, they have their own auditor. Now we're going to add a fourth player to this picture. So ADP uses an auditor. And what do we call this? We call this the service auditor. So this is player number four. So ADP knows companies such as Farhat Accounting Lectures as, met, as well as many other companies need their financial statement audited, which is part of, which is payroll as part of their financial statement. Therefore, what they did over the years, they said, well, we need to keep our customers happy. Therefore, what we need to do, we need to, to hire our own service auditor and our own service auditor Will, will issue a report, so this auditor here will issue a report to satisfy the auditor of the user of the service organization. So this is what's happening. So the service auditor, the company that audit ADP, 
they know what the procedures is. So they will issue a report about, in this situation, payroll. Now, I'm going to come back later, maybe in 15, 20 minutes, and change this example slightly. So here we're talking about payroll. I'm going to be utilizing shortly another service other than payroll, and you're going to see why. But for now, we're dealing with payroll. Are we all okay with this? So hopefully you are. So this is what we're looking at now. So let's get started. There are three types of service organization control reports, three types, which are SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3 report. So simply put, and let's name this company something, the service auditor called XYZ, 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 XYZ. So XYZ, which is XYZ can issue three types of report, SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3. We need to know what SOC 1 is, what SOC 2 is, and what SOC 3 is. Okay. So SOC 1, and you have to be very careful because we're going to be very specific here. SOC 1 report, report on the control at the service organization relevant to the user's entity internal control over financial reporting. So SOC 1, report on the service organization. Who's the service organization? ADP. So they would give us a report about the entity's internal control financial reporting. But what, what is that report? What does that give us about their internal control? It's intended to meet the needs of the entities that use the service organization and their auditor. That's fine. That's why we need, we need this for the best auditor who are responsible for understanding the internal control over financial information reporting at the service organization. So there we go. So what do they do? XYZ will give the best CPA firm, SOC 1, to tell them about the internal control at ADP because the best CPA firm is concerned about my control and part of my control is ADP. So this is SOC 1. Now we need to know specifically what SOC 1 does. We'll see this in a moment. There are two types of reports on control. And notice I have control in red because this is important. There are two types of control uh, report on control. We have type 1 report. Report on management description, I should have put this in red, of a service organization system and the suitability of the design of the control. And we have type 2 report, report on the management description also, and the suitability of the design and operating effectiveness. So, type 1, notice, and we're going to repeat this a few times. Type 1 report only talks about the description. It tells you the description about their internal control. Type 2 will tell you about the description plus the operating effectiveness. Now, the best CPA firm, what do they prefer? They prefer type 2. Why type 2? Because, well, if they're telling us it's working good, then we don't have to worry about anything as, as long as we trust the, uh, the auditor of the service organization. Okay? So type 2 is better than type 1. Type 1, it just tells us what their internal control looks like. So let's be a little bit more specific for type 1 and type 2. Let's look at type 1. Type 1, the service auditor. The service auditor, again, this is XYZ, expresses an opinion. And look at this opinion. What does it express about? About the fairness. Again, I'm going to box the description of the service organization system and an opinion about the suitability of the design. So basically, they tell you about how does their internal control works. How does it work? They just tell you how does it work. And is it, you know the suitability of the design what, what, the, what does what does their design looks like okay now the service organization how does how does the service organization do this obtain and read the reads the system description prepared by the organization management and assess whether the description is fairly presented so how do they come up with this how does xyz comes with this conclusion they just they they, they take a look at the internal control of adp that's all what they do okay in making that assessment, the service auditor evaluate whether the management use suitable criteria in preparing and presenting the service organization system uh, description. So all what they're doing is they're evaluating to see if the description uh, meets the suitable criteria. Does it look good on paper? That's all we're saying. Does it look good on paper? For example, the service auditor would evaluate whether the organization description notice include information about procedure by which transactions are initiated, authorized, recorded, processed, corrected, and reported for the user's entity and the related accounting record prepared to support those processes. All what we're looking is the description of these things, the description of the initiation, authorization, recorded. We're not testing anything. We're looking to see if they properly, if they are properly described and properly designed, okay? Described and designed. 
The service auditor evaluate whether control has been designed, again, to address risk threatening the achievement of the control objective and whether these control, if operating as described, if operating as described, we're not testing, we're just up, if operating they're described, we're making the assumption that if they're operating as described, provide a reasonable assurance that those risks would not, uh, that those risks would not prevent achievement of control objective. So all what we're saying, once again, I'm saying the same thing in a different way. They're looking at the description of the control, and they're saying if those control are working as they are described, eh, they, then, then they are good. And this is what this SOC 1 report does. So report number one, type one says, we looked at their description of their internal control. The description looks good. The design looks good. As long as it's working as described, it's good. Did we do any testing? No testing whatsoever. Okay, and we'll give this report to the best CPA firm telling them this is what the internal control looks like. This is what the internal control looks like. Now, test SOC 2 report. Now, what does SOC 2 report gives? SOC 2, in addition to the procedures performed in type 1 engagement, and what's type 1 engagement? Obtain an, an understanding of the description and the design. In type 2 engagement, the service auditor notice perform test of the operating effectiveness of the control. Excellent. They now, they tested their internal control. At type 1 report, they only looked at the description. T type 2, they tested it. Now, why would ADP get a type 2? Because ADP wants to attract clients. They will tell them, look, don't worry. If Once you get audited, we're going to provide your auditor with a type 2 report. This way, we give you more assurance that our control works. Type 1 doesn't give you much. It tells you what their internal control is. Okay? The service organization type 2 report contained two opinions. One about the description and suitability. Basically, they'll tell you what happened in type one. So basically, they they basically given you two, two reports. Type one, the description and suitability, plus an additional opinion of, of the operating effectiveness, which is type two. Excellent. Thank you very much. I need type two. So type two, um, effectiveness of the control. And notice throughout the period. Well, this is also, um, maybe we sh I should mention this. Type one versus type two. Type 1 report is as of a specific date. So, for example, December 31st, 1231, 2017, 18, 19, it doesn't matter. So, type 1, they're telling you this is as a specific date, one date. Type 2 is for a period of time. So, when they test the type 2, when they provide you a type 2, they will say for period, for year ended, 2020. So it means throughout 2020, the, the system is operating effectively. Type 1, it will be as a, as a specific date. For example, December 31st, 2018, December 31st, 2019. So it's only on that date we can say what, we, what, what we're supposed to say. So it's also important to note this. Okay. Use of this report is generally restricted. Generally speaking, SOC 2 report is restricted to specified parties such as management, of users entity customers of the service organization regulators suppliers and business partners so you can only provide SOC 2 report to people who you are working with right now this is what SOC 2 report looks like okay hopefully you understand what SOC 2 report is because now we're going to have a small twist to SOC 2 report okay so SOC 2 report includes SOC 1 and SOC 2 which is the up op the operating effectiveness now we're going to be looking at a special SOC 2 report is when we outsource our IT information technology so let's go back up to that picture that we started earlier and forget about a payroll example let's assume we need we need an IT company so let's assume we hired um, IT services a company called IT services Inc now what we did we outsource so now IT Services Inc. is part of our company. So we outsource, rather than payroll, we outsource our IT services. That's the only difference we're going to do here. So rather than payroll, we outsource our IT. So now for IT, we have slightly different concerns. What are the concerns for IT? Think about the concerns for IT. Well, we're concerned about the privacy, about confidentiality, about the security of the system. So, okay. Service organization provide a number of IT services. So other than payroll, 
you're going to provide IT services that may not relate to the internal control over financial reporting. So the IT, the IT services has nothing to do with the internal control over financial reporting. But since they are using their IT, we have to get some assurance that their IT is working properly. A good example will be a university that outsourced the processing of student application for admission would likely be subject to laws requiring the university to maintain the privacy of the information included in the application. And a lot of, lot of times now, when you applied for college, what happened is you apply only in one, in one system, and that system will send your application to various colleges. So those various colleges what they did, they outsource that application. They don't want to maintain the application internally. They want the third party to collect this information and send it to them. Now, the university, they want to make sure that third party have good control, have good security, have good availability, good processing system, so on and so forth. So what we need to do is, if we're auditing that university, we want to know what's happening to that third party at IT services. Okay? So a SOC 2 report at, at in a SOC 2 report, report on the control at the service organization relevant to security, availability, processing integrity, confidentiality, and privacy. So now we are dealing with different concern. We're not dealing with internal control over, over financial reporting. Here we're dealing internal control over the IT. Is intended to meet a broad range of users who, meet inf who need informational and assurance control at the service organization that affects security, availability, all these criteria. So now, if you are using, if you are outsourcing your IT, you need to, you need to get a SOC 2 report that deals with other concerns, other concerns than internal control over financial reporting. So the service auditor used the criteria and something called trust services principle, which we're going to see what those criteria are for evaluating and reporting on control relating to those criteria. And we're going to define those criteria in a moment. But this is what we're saying. If you're dealing with IT, IT doesn't affect financial reporting directly. Payroll does. If your payroll is incorrect, then your financial is incorrect. But if your IT is incorrect, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't affect your financial reporting directly. It affects other things in your company, but not financial reporting. It will eventually indirectly, but not directly. So what are we concerned with? We are concerned with security. Security practices, ensuring that the system is protected against unauthorized use, both physical and logical. We want to make sure that the security at that firm is good. Okay, so the audit, the, the service auditor will tell us, they will test the system and they will tell us about their security if, we, if that's our concern. Availability, ensuring that the system is available for operating and as um, and use as committed or agreed. So the system is constantly working. So if a student log in at three o'clock in the morning, they want to submit their application, they can do so. Processing integrity, ensuring that the system process is complete, accurate, timely, and authorized. So when the students submit all their information, it captures all the information, it captures it accurately, it updated accurately, and if they are authorized to, to input the information, it will allow them to do so. Confidentiality, ensuring that the information designated as confidential is protected as committed or agreed. And here, confide confidentiality is important, um, especially what happened recently with one of the credit reporting agencies. They were able to um, uh, obtain information, social security, name and addresses of millions of uh, of people. Privacy, online privacy practices, ensuring that personal information obtained as a result of the e-commerce uh, is collected, used, disclosed, and retained as committed or agreed. So basically, also you have a good privacy policy. So SOC 2 control here is ensuring that all these are being met. Because again, we outsource the system. We want to make sure those, what we call the trust services principle, are being met. Now, one last, well, not one last thing. The third report is a SOC 3 report. SOC 3 report is a trust service report, basically deal with SOC 2 that deals with IT for service organization. It's similar to SOC 2, except that we did, I did not mention this earlier. Uh, well, I did. Remember what we said? We said about SOC 2 report is only designed for, we, let me just show you here because this restricted. It's only designed for specified parties. SOC 3 report, that's the only difference between SOC 2 and SOC 3 report, you can, it can be distributed to a wide range of users current users as well as potential users. So when, when, you, when, when the service auditor issue a SOC 3 report, this allows the service organization to, to, to share the report with current customers as well as prospective. Prospective means future customers. They can use it as part of their marketing effort that, look, if, you are, if we allow us to, serve, uh, to handle your IT, we will provide you with a SOC 2 report so base, or SOC 3 report. So this, this can be used as a marketing tool for the company that they have a, a good service auditor. That's what we're saying here. So this is what SOC 3 report, it can be widely used. 
Now, one more thing I want to mention um, is, do you, does the auditor have to mention type one or type two report in your audit report? So the best CPA firm, you remember the best CPA firm, they got either type one or type two. Do they have to mention type one or type two? And the answer is no, they don't have to mention type one or type two. This is not a component audit. They're, they did not audit for us, okay? So they're not, it's not considered, considered a component audit. They're just providing us with a service. We don't have to mention anything about them. And this is basically, uh, SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3. Make sure to read your textbook and uh, complete your homework, complete your quiz. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, always, always, always study hard. It's worth it. And in the next session, we would look at special engagement to attest to prospective financial statements.